Yeah, there you go. All right, we're here. Got about three minutes, and uh, we just want to uh, make sure that we're on and everything is ready to go. Oh, look at that little icon right there. It says, try another way of going live during your broadcast. We probably shouldn't click that, huh? <laughs> we should probably just let it let it live. Um, all right, so we got some watchers. Welcome, Wendy. We're here. We're getting ready. Another couple minutes, and uh, Brendan and I are excited to be here with you today. So we're going to introduce ourselves just a little bit. Hello, everybody. Started a couple minutes early, and uh, I like it out here. And it's really cool when the kids are playing. <laughs> Next door. So, all right, so we're coming to you live. We want to explore a little bit of um, some things that we go through on a daily, weekly basis. We're gonna be talking about the mind, the brain, and um, and we're gonna have some fun. The Watson family's here. Happy Friday! We're launching the weekend. Woo! So, um, this is my weekend launcher, my superpower. <laughs> right here and uh welcome cheyenne we're so glad to have you and brendan you can see him yeah driving in hey cheyenne so who's that lady that julie lady all right heidi welcome we're gonna start in about two minutes but we just thought we'd wrap a little bit uh before and actually what it, any nobody really knows is that my son brendan here can rap <laughs> but I'm not gonna make you sing any of your rap songs that you've written okay so here's what I promised um, today is I promised that I would embarrass my son at least four or five times um, and so uh, that might that might happen hi Tammy good to see you how's it going everybody we trust that your Friday is going well I don't know about you but um, the days do go quickly for me I feel like the week has gone by really fast um, does it go fast for you? Yeah. How do you keep yourself busy during the week? Everything from work, Instacart. Um, to oh, okay. So you're doing Instacart? Yep. Yeah. And then also homework with Tell folks online what, school. Who Insta what Instacart is. Instacart is a service where you pick up all of the shopping items for people and you deliver it to their door. All right. So uh, this is my son, Brennan, everybody. We are live, we're launched now. It's officially 5 p.m. so we can get started. Um, hi, Heather, good to see you. Great to see you guys. Um, and my, this is my eldest son. So the eldest son is always your favorite son, right? That just has to be work that way. And so I'm very proud of my son. I'd like to start out just talking a little bit about uh, Brennan and my relationship because it kind of ties into what we're talking about today on this Friday 5 p.m. devotion um, Brennan and I um, see very clearly um, You know ideas and perspectives about life and we um, we like to debate and argue We like to use our words to describe things that are going on and so it ends up for some real creative opportunities to discuss things and one thing I really love about my son Brennan and why he's here with me today is he can take a look at scripture with me and, and we do this as a family we sit down we we're reading scripture and I can always count on Brennan to really have a good analysis of what's taking place there and answer some questions so poor Connor because <laughs> I didn't include him so this is Brennan I've got another boy named Connor and uh, and I just basically got done saying he's not my favorite, and so somebody is empathizing with Connor. So um, hey, today you guys on this uh, on this five o'clock uh, Friday afternoon, um, you know we've been quarantined for a long time now. But outside of that, outside of that, we often uh, have um, struggles that happen in the brain. Uh, we call them anxiety, and. There are times that you and I have discussed this topic, you know, what's it like to feel the anxiety? And so we want to look at some scripture. Um, but before we do that, I just want you to be able to share a little bit about um, some of the things that might concern you during this time. How, how, what does anxiety or worry or fear, how does that ra rise up in your life? How do you experience that? Well, I think a lot of the times I experience anxiety when I am out of control of something that I should have the ability to be in control of. Like when I feel mm -hmm. like I can't control 
something that is m related to me. So when, like specifically, my big some of my biggest anxieties is like navigating, is oh. when I can't like when I'm driving and I don't know where I'm going. Yeah, and yeah. I can't control. Like yeah. I have no idea of where I'm supposed to go, and I just can't. I can't memorize street names or anything. And so uh -huh, uh -huh. it's a big struggle. What what hap What does that feel like when that ramps up? What does that spiral feel like for you? It feels like I am going around in circles and never getting anywhere. Mm. What does your emotions feel like? What are how, what kind Panic. of emotions do you have? Panic. Okay. And I and I noticed that you said something about being feeling out of control. And I think you guys would all agree. Um, I experience this all the time. The minute that I'm not feeling like I'm in control of something is when this negative emotion rises up. Um, it kind of feels like it takes over. Yeah. Right? Yep. Um, does it, does it ever feel like you kind of lose lose uh, reality a little bit? Like you, you're not even functioning properly in that zone? Yes, yeah. very much so. Yeah. And so I think we all deal with that to one degree or another. And um, so we're going to be looking at some scripture today. We're going to start off on a series because every Friday I'm going to hit some portions of Philippians. We're going to be in Philippians where Paul is addressing the, the Philippian church. And so we're going to take a look at that a little bit today and just get in brief uh, touch base so I want to really talk about this brain dilemma and the reason why I've got Brendan here today as well is because you know he is fascinated and excited about a variety of psychological things and he comes home and he just will tell me everything he's learning about the brain or about emotion or whatever and and uh, and we have our uh, conversations and our debates even about how this stuff takes place Nope. But Brandon, what do you think happens to the brain when we have anxiety? What, what do you think is happening? Do you remember from any of your studies what's taking place in the brain? Maybe, maybe you don't, and that's okay. But I can't remember a specific psychological, scientific mm -hmm. approach to why anxiety okay. happens. But okay. Can I share a little bit of what takes place? What, and, and the reason why we're feeling a little out of control is there's a chemical. There's a three different chemicals that actually rush into the frontal lobe of our brain when we start to feel out of control. Cortisol. Yeah, that's one of them, right. It, it rushes to the front of the brain and it takes over. And initially, anxiety is that feeling of fear or that response mechanism of our brain is meant to do what for us initially if it's done right? Light or fight. Yeah, to protect us from something. So it's actually God designed and it's something God intended for us to use. But sometimes, and often, uh, we get flooded with too much of that chemical and our and our anxiety raises and we can't just go well I don't feel like having anxiety anymore it's, it's a, not something like that it's huh? a defense mechanism yeah it's a defense mechanism okay so we want to just touch base with a little bit of that and frame that that framework around a person we're going to talk about today and a church we're going to talk about today and basically in the old in the New Testament rather when they talked about the church, they always talked about the church in a specific city. And today we're going to talk about a church in Philippi. So I want to set this up for everybody. Uh, we're going to be talking about Paul. Paul's ministry goes out to this place called Philippi. And Philippi was a Roman colony in Macedonia. A Roman colony in Macedonia. And Paul knew that if he could get to these Roman colonies where they were educated where they could articulate and think it would spread the gospel message, the good news of Jesus Christ everywhere. So that's, that's where we start. And I, in order to start us out correctly, I want us to take a look at Paul's experiences and how he handled anxiety. And so I'd like you to read Acts 16, 6 through 10, because this is where we get the basis of why Paul ended up fi founding a church in Philippi. So... Brennan, could you read Acts 16, 6 through 10? Yes, I can. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia in Galatia, having been kept up by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithy Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So they passed by Mysia and went down to the Tropas, or Troas. Troas. Uh -huh. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. 
After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to the preach the gospel to them. Okay. So, I didn't know I was going to trick you like that and have all these words of all these cities that were difficult to pronounce, but um, yeah, so good job. So, we are looking at Paul, and here's the deal. Paul had a mission, and his mission was spread the gospel all over the world. So, he tries to go to Asia, and everything is stopping him. What is a place in a, in a point in time when we feel the most anxiety? What, what is a place in a time when we feel anxiety drive into our life? When we have a plan and it doesn't go play out. Way. Yeah, it doesn't go our way. So here Paul, right off the top, is going to found a church based on not having a plan and not being able to exercise that plan. Now, Paul was a pretty uh, stubborn individual. And he would really go after things that he wanted to do. So can you imagine Paul all of a sudden being stopped from doing something and he has to turn and he has to go uh, to this place called Macedonia. So we've got this foundation and this framework for where he wants, wanted to go and Paul is so flexible in his life that he's willing to make this adjustment. And so we pick it up later, we'll pick it up in, in Acts. What happens is he ends up saving three people in Philippi, three people, and they begin to expand the church. The three people Paul ends up uh, spreading this faith with, one, Timothy, uh, Timothy. He, Timothy was with him when they were uh, sharing the gospel to Philippi, but you're, that's smart, good job. Uh, but Philippi was launched by, get this, a person in the prostitution business, okay? And a demon-possessed uh, person who had been freed from demons and started, uh, had been in prostitution. And so uh, Paul uses her to begin the church in Philippi. A wealthy, a wealthy aristocratic woman who has this desire to pray and this need and desire to pray. And then thirdly, a guard in a prison. These three people launch the church in Philippi. So I find little nuances and backgrounds like that very fascinating. And so Paul is going, uh, going about his work. He established this, establishes this ministry in Philippi. And so we're going to begin, and we're just going to touch briefly, uh, starting with Philippians chapter 1, 14 through 18. Now, I want you to understand something. Paul uh, could have given up full of stress. What happened after he got turned away, you may not remember this, but after he got turned away, from Asia and he goes to Macedonia what happens right away when he gets to Macedonia do you have any guesses right when he gets there what happens it's very negative prison. yes he exactly that's why I brought this guy because he always answer he knows the answer to this question so as soon as Paul as soon as Paul gets to Macedonia they throw him in prison hmm. prison isolation Plans change. Quarantine. <laughs> no. Plans change. So everything he thought he was going to be able to do, you know, here he's, well, okay, I'll obey you, God. I'm going to go to, to Philippi, right? Bam, he gets thrown in prison. What would it be like to have this mission where he wants to spread the gospel? Spread the gospel means you got to tell people and talk to people. What do you think would be going through your head if suddenly you arrive somewhere because God told you to go there and all of a sudden you find yourself in jail. What, what kinds of thoughts would you have maybe in your mind? You get arrested and put in jail. I think that I would think, how do I get out of this jail? <laughs> <laughs> right. right, how do I get it? So, you know, it's funny because what Paul started doing, it's, he started writing. And almost all of his writings and all of his letters that we have in Scripture are from where? Jail. Jail. You know why? Because he couldn't do anything else. He had to sit down and begin writing, and he had to write and write and write. And so we have a large portion of the New Testament written from Paul while he's in jail because he wants to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. He wants to sp spread the gospel, and all of a sudden he's trapped in these jail cells everywhere he goes. Yep. I think that would create some level of anxiety. Lots of frustration. Yeah. So we know that Paul was a, a, a go-getter, very energetic, yet he gets thwarted and he gets put in jail and now he's writing all these letters. And look how he writes to the Philippians from jail. Okay, this is weeks later after he's in jail, he started the church, they've launched, 
Uh, I'm sorry, it could have been up to three years later. Let's read Philippians 1, 14 through 18 for everybody. Okay. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I am in chains. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. Oh, great. So I wanted to point this out. In Philippians chapter 1, right at the head, headlong, uh, Paul knows that his mission is to spread the gospel and to spread it properly in Philippi. And take a look at it. He says, because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters become confident in the Lord. And then in these next verses, he goes on to say that there are some people causing trouble. So he is not even able to control the situation at all. He's trying to infuse the right gospel. Everywhere Paul went, there was the wrong gospel being told, a gospel of works. And, and Paul's trying to uh, make sure that people understand the true gospel of grace. Uh, thank you guys for all that encouragement, by the way. <laughs> we see all those notes. Uh, so he's sitting in chains. And I want you to catch something, Brennan. He's sitting in chains, and there's people that actually are not preaching the right gospel, or they're opposing Paul. Without opposing him to their, his face, they're opposing him in the church of Philippi, of which he formed and started. And what does he say here? And this is the craziest thing to put in our mind, how he handles conflict. Because at, what, when you are in conflict with somebody, when somebody does something that you don't, like or agree with what is your natural inclination what what happens to get mad and argue with them to get mad and argue with them yeah exactly we, uh, we want to fight we want to win our we want to win the day especially if we think they might be hurt harming somebody and here's paul he says the former preach christ out of selfish ambition he said there's two groups at the church in philippi the former preach christ out of selfishness not sincerely and they're supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I'm in chains. So he's in chains in jail. Hmm. He goes, That's but it doesn't. But what does he say here? Read 18 again. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. So folks, we need to uh, wrap these th this up this Friday thing. This is the big hitter of the, today's message. Philippians 1, 14 through 18. Paul is thwarted in his plans. Uh, he is put in jail. He's chained up. He's supposed to be growing churches. And suddenly, other people are going into these churches and spreading a gospel that isn't accurate, uh, not entirely accurate, and they think they're putting Paul down. They would go into these churches and say, ah, the gospel you heard from Paul isn't exactly right. You need to do some works as well. You know, not just grace, but you need to do some works. And so they come in, and look what he says. He says, but it doesn't matter because the important thing is that they're preaching Christ and that their false motives will be proven true, right? And that Christ is preached. And then he says, because of this, I rejoice. So when we are in a difficult situation, when life pathways take turns that we weren't familiar with, that we weren't planned for, what is Paul suggesting that we do to combat that, that anxiety at a level that we experience? What do you think that he would say to us if he was sitting here? rejoice that Christ is being spread <laughs> <laughs> rejoice rejoice regardless of the things that were out, out of our control and so that's what I'm thinking about today when I'm thinking about um, the good news of Jesus Christ and the out of control nature we find ourselves in right I like my patterns I like my plans uh, and some of them haven't come the way I want them to be but what I'm grateful for is that the Lord takes these circumstances and he can use them to expand the kingdom, to share Christ's love with other people, um, to take a look at ourselves and go, whatever circumstance I am, even if I'm chained unfairly, even if people are slandering me in the background, right? Have, mm -hmm. have you ever been, tell me about a, in closing, tell us a story. I know that you've been uh, 
ridiculed or put down or have had situations of pain because we all have right you have experiences yep. why don't you tell uh, everybody an experience that you had that was particularly painful of like accusation yeah or just pe people just ridiculing you or something of that nature. have you ever experienced anything like that yeah okay. I'm just trying to put think of a proper one to use yeah um What about the swimming? What about when you were younger, when you were trying to be kind and to be friendly? On oh. the swim deck? Yeah. Yeah. Talk about that a little bit. Talk right into the camera. Well, I would <laughs> try to be friendly to people yeah. in swim, and they would basically just ignore me or act like I'm worthless because I wasn't faster than them. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, he was fast. He just wasn't faster than the fastest, and they had these groupies of who could uh, swim the fastest, and you weren't always in that group. And so um, so there were times when you were rejected and ridiculed and put to side. Mm -hmm. When you think about your relationship with Jesus Christ and what Paul's experiencing here, how would you combat some of that? Did you ever feel anxiety when they rejected you? I mean, did you ever feel weird when you were left, uh, left on the deck standing by yourself or whatever it was? I think I've been used to being a lone wolf a lot of my life because people don't seem to like I don't know I'm, I'm not a conformist to like groups mm -hmm. so they get threatened when they have a group of people where you have the goonie situ or the goon situation where you have like a leader goons. yeah, yeah you have like the leader guy and then you have the, <laughs> the goons that surround them and just affirm everything he says okay yeah and so I've never been a part of one of those I just do my own thing yeah and so I think part of that is uh, why they don't like the idea uh -huh. of a person that's like individual of them uh -huh, uh -huh. that doesn't conform to their likes and dislikes. Yeah, yeah. How has your relationship with Jesus Christ, how do you get to this point? Because I see you rejoicing all the time. I see you worshiping the Lord. I see you connected to the body of Christ. How, how did this remain? How did you remain faithful in this, in this part of your life? Well, mm -hmm. I mean... Worship in particular, like sing, like in the form of singing, I mm. really enjoy, mm -hmm. and it makes me feel more connected yeah. to God, and it makes me it opens up an emotional part for me, and sometimes it's like draining in a way that because I'm like feeling like really emotional, but like it's a mm -hmm. good drain. It's yeah. like an emotional, like it's almost like letting it out, like letting out tears or like letting out something like that. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, um, all that said is what we're trying to just explore a little bit is what is it like to be a faithful believer and go through difficulty, anxiety, fear, rejection, people slandering you in the background. What do we do as, as faithful followers of Christ? And um, what we're going to do is we're going to continue to rejoice. And in a weird way, we're actually going to rejoice whenever we see anyone doing things right for the Lord. Uh, even if we've been offended or hurt, we're just going to continue to try to be a praise to the Lord and continue to move forward. So that's the example we have from Paul. That's just one example. In the coming weeks, we're going to talk a little bit about how the brain works uh, and how that plays it, its course out in uh, Paul's writings when it talks about taking our thoughts captive and, and other variety of things like that. But I just wanted to bring my son into this conversation today. I wanted to thank you guys. If you've ever struggled or anything like that, if you need to have a listening ear or someone to talk to, you can always click on many of our links on social media. You can get an appointment, um, have that conversation, and we'd be glad to listen and pray with you and love on you. You can do this. I'm going to tell you one thing. There is a war, and the war isn't the coronavirus. The war is in our mind. It's between here and here, and the Lord already was aware of that. And he wants to shore those things up for us as we follow him. So, thank you, my love. <laughs> my, my son, Brandon. Thanks for joining me. You guys have a great rest of the weekend. We look forward to worshiping with you on Sunday. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Oh, yeah, you got to hit the finish button. <laughs>